Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at ASUS's ROG Strix XG27WQ. This is a ultra-fast gaming monitor for those with relatively deep pockets. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at ASUS's ROG Strix. This is the XG27WQ. Now there's a ton of models actually in this range, so there's the 27 and goes right up to 32 inches, so there's uh, sizes to fit all kind of pockets. And talking of pockets, this in the moment in the UK retails for in and around the £430 mark, so yeah, it's not a budget offering by any means, and hopefully when we get out of the box and test it, it actually lives up to its price point. Some of the features you get for that little bit of extra ROG tax is you get a WQHD screen, so that's uh, 2560 by 1440p. Also, you get 165 hertz refresh rate, so yeah, ultra silky smooth, supports FreeSync Pro, and this will work with GeForce cards, 10 series upwards, and obviously Radeon cards as well, supporting FreeSync technology. It also has a one millisecond MPRT, which is basically kind of motion blur stuff. So going from gray to gray, one millisecond. So yeah, should look absolutely fine and give you that silky smooth blur free image, even at those higher refresh rates. Also, this monitor is VESA certified for HDR 400. So yeah, if you're into your HDR, then this is gonna tick that box for you. When it comes to the packaging, yeah, it's a huge box. It actually looks really nice. So if you were to receive this as a gift, I think you'd be pretty darn impressed. Not one of those uh, boring beige boxes. And on the sides goes into some more of the specifications, which uh, I'll give you a close up of there. So you can see the actual model number, etc. And on the back of the box is uh, basically the same as the front of the box. On this side, we've got some more of the specifications. So we quickly drill down through those. So as we said, WQHD uh, 2560 by 1440, 165 Hertz rapid refresh rate, one millisecond MPRT trace free, DCI P3 support. So it's calibrated to run at the DCI P3 specs. Also you've got shadow boost, ELMB, which is your motion blur technology, which is proprietary to ASUS for this particular model. Also, you've got HDR technology, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, uh, compatible with ASUS Aurora Sync for your RGB fans out there. Also, you've got a display widget as well, which you can use in software, HDMI certified, and you come with a three year warranty. So, that's enough about the box. Let's do some unboxing and see what we actually get for our money. Okay, so let's go through the uh, the unboxing process. So there's a ton of stuff here to get through, so we'll go through as quickly as I possibly can. So let's start from this end. So first of all, we've got our power adapter. So this is a brick type power adapter. Connection wise, you've got the clover leaf type connection there, and that terminates in a barrel connector. So there's that. Next up, we've got a display port cable, a USB 3.0 cable, and a HDMI cable. Moving up, we've got our accessories and information. So in here, we've got the kind of quick start guide and all that kind of usual stuff. Quick start guide, how to put it all together. Also gives you information about the ports on the bottom. You get the VIP member notice. And this one is the, uh, the cool thing. So if you're into your RGB, you'll like this. Well, potentially you will. So this goes onto the bottom of the monitor and displays through onto the bottom of the desktop. So this is the uh, ROG logo, which is swappable. So you can put that one in as well. If you don't like the uh, the circular design, you can go with the kind of triangular type thing. Or if you don't like those designs at all and you just want some RGB, then they do also include a clear lens as well. That's all pretty cool. So moving on to the other side, we've got a selection of power cables. So you've got the Euro two pin and also the UK three pin. And last up, we've got the actual monitor stand itself, which is all nicely wrapped up. And there we go. What a lovely piece of engineering that actually is. It's incredible what they can do. And also there is a uh, little bit of a logo on there. So you've got the HDR 400 logo. Yeah, that's a, a really, really nice uh, bit of kit. Underneath there is a release screw, which is just there. So that is what is used to actually connect this to the monitor itself. So once we've got all that out, we can remove this top section and then we've got the monitor itself. So. Holding that back, you can see this is the uh, the rear arm and the back of the monitor. So let's get it out and get it set up. And actually, we can do it from here. So we'll just get this rear leg and using that screw on the back, what we do is line these up and then use that twist screw. Just do that up as tight. And then you can install your logo of choice on this bottom section. So we'll go with the standard one, 
a little bit of peeling to do. So we'll peel those off and then this connects into here. So it just pushes in and actually on the actually on the thing itself there's a little point there as you can see and that matches up with a point either there or there. So actually there's a couple of points in there so we'll line those up. So point there, point there, so that means it goes in that way. And there we go, just pushes into place. And there we see, we've got our ROG logo. Nicely done. So let's get it uh, connected up and see what it's actually like. So there we have, there's the monitor out of the box, and as you see, this is it on the stand. So you've got adjustment, so you've got tilt adjustment, up and down. Also, you've got movement up and down, which is on a kind of almost like a spring-loaded mechanism on the back there. Doesn't appear to be any uh, any swivel on this, but I guess being a curved monitor, you probably wouldn't want that. It does appear to be a fingerprint magnet. We've already got a couple of fingerprints just there in the middle, so yeah, you may want to look out for that. It is a kind of like a, a satin matte finish on it. It's not a glossy finish, so that should help with reflections, all that kind of stuff. And uh, well, Kath is actually there with the camera, and you can definitely not see her in the uh, in the reflections at all on any angles, which you uh, you probably should be able to see normally on a normal screen. So reflection wise, going to be excellent. Energy rating wise, this uh, gets a B, so let's uh, take that off, we don't need that anymore. And you've also got some covers over the ROG logo on the bottom. Again, goes through some of the specs, so you've got the uh, resolution, 165 hertz, one second MRPT, as we said. Actually, probably the best thing to do is to uh, get this fired up so you can actually see what the image looks like on it. Okay, so we've got the screen set up and uh, crudely connected to my PC behind. I've actually swapped PCs because uh, that PC has Aurora Sync. You can actually configure the RGB on the back, which I'll try and get some B-roll of. There is actually an RGB ring on the back of the screen, so you can take all that. And as you can see here in the Aurora software, you've now got motherboard, DRAM, display, and the uh, extra strip as well. So you can control that in there. So if you want the RGB on the back of the screen to actually synchronize to the rest of your PC, definitely you can go ahead and do that. Also, it's got some cool other features in the menu, and the menu is quite elaborate, so we'll try and go through some of that to show you what it's like. At the moment, I've got it set, so it's showing the real-time frames per second, so currently we're on 165 frames per second, and uh, the, uh, the responsiveness is absolutely amazing. Now, you're probably not going to see this on the screen, and looking at my monitor over there, I can see already that the, uh, the blur on there is nowhere near like what it's like on here. So unfortunately, it's one of those things, due to the limitations of how camera technology works, really you do have to see this for yourself to actually get the full benefit from it. Now I've actually got the uh, ghosting program running here, so this again, you're not really gonna see it as I'm seeing it, but this is pretty much buttery smooth. This is on the uh, Blurbusters website, so you can go and do the UFO test. There's all sorts of things you can do motion test to see how good or bad your monitor actually copes with certain types of display. And Overall, what I can see straight away is there is a really, really uniform color spread across the top. There doesn't seem to be any kind of obvious bleeding or any kind of cool or hot spots in the screen. And hopefully that again is, you can actually see that. So if there was any items on the screen where it was particularly bad, you would definitely see that. So let's take a look at some of the features actually in the menu. Now on the back, we'll take a look at some of the buttons as well. So you can see what the button layout is like. But first of all, we'll go through the menu. Now the menu controls through a really nice joystick button. You have got some buttons on the side here as well, but most of it is done with the traditional joystick button. So you just press the button in to get your menu come up and you get all this at the bottom here, which uh, we'll get you some close-ups of now. So let's take a look at the on-screen display. So to get that up, just press the joystick button on the bottom. I'll give you some close-ups. I am recording this in OBS so you can see it a little bit better. So at the bottom we've got our Republic of Gamers display and it shows you all the convenient features like what the display port you're on, the FPS mode, etc, adaptive sync, and whether you've got HDR on or off, etc. So first one you've got your gaming tab, which you can go into the overdrive menu, so you can choose your setting for overdrive. Also you've got your FreeSync Premium Plus, which you can uh, enable or disable. You've also got your Game Plus, so you can actually put a fake crosshair on the middle of the screen. So if you're playing something like Counter-Strike and you're using perhaps a rifle, which doesn't have a crosshair on the screen all the time, then uh, that can be a little bit of a help for using those games without a crosshair. Uh, there's an option of crosshairs, so you've got the crosshair, which you can be either red dot, green dot, circles, etc. crosshairs. You get the general idea. So. There's that. You've also got a timer, so you can time um, how long the screen's actually on for, or how long you're in the game, etc. Those sorts of things. FPS counter, 
which you can choose the uh, dynamic fresh rate graph, which you can have on the screen. So if we choose that as well, you do get a menu at the top of the screen. Again, I'm not sure if the overlay is going to come out in OBS, but hopefully, certainly <laughs> hope it does. Uh, I've always, this has been a wasted experiment. Anyway, so you've got your frame rate and also you've got your kind of graph there of what's happening with the fluctuations when you go underneath that frame rate, that kind of stuff. Uh, going back into the menu, so in gaming, you've got the uh, game visual, so whichever type of setup. So if you've got a particular one or you can set user modes and also you've got shadow boost as well. So you can enable that, which will kind of boost the screen settings. Again, you can do all that manually if you wanted to, but there's tons of options actually in the screen. In image, you've got options for brightness, contrast, HDR if it's enabled, uh, vivid pixel, ASCR, blue light filters, all that kind of stuff. Aspect control as well. In color, you've got color temperature. You've also got the gamma, and also you've got the saturation, which you can chest, which you can change manually. Input select, you can set to uh, auto, or you can override it. So if you've got a device which doesn't automatically switch, then you can choose that. And you've got your lighting effects, so you can go into Aurora Sync. You can enable or disable that. That is for the RGB on the back. Also the light in motion, which is the light which you can see on the bottom here. You can enable or disable that or change the little brightness. So if you choose level one, it will be a little bit brighter. You get the general idea. Hopefully that's displaying on the screen. You can see what that looks like. Moving down to my favorite. So you've got shortcuts for various settings. So you can configure that as you want to. And you've got system setup. So you can go and change language, your sound options, whether it's muted, eco mood, etc. The USB hub, you can change stuff for that. If, if you've got it plugged in, you can't access it because it means obviously that you're using it, so you can't make any changes. You've got power indicator, you can turn that on or off. Uh, power key lock, key lock, OSD setup, transparency, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, loads of features in there. You can play around with your heart's content. The joystick button is actually really handy. Probably a good idea actually if I spin this around so you can actually see some of the connectivity actually on the screen and also the buttons. Okay, so this is the uh, the rear of the monitor. Now I haven't got the RGB on at the moment because to be honest with you, already this monitor is pissing me off. I've plugged it into my PC, fired up Aurora Sync, and for some reason I just can't get the RGB to come on. It has come on and it was on. I'm trying to get some B-roll of it, but at the moment it's frustrating me beyond belief, which for the best part of 450 quid for a monitor, frankly, isn't acceptable. It should work as it's intended to. Now maybe it's something I'm doing wrong, user error. I wouldn't rule it out entirely, but certainly it's frustrating the hell out of me already. But anyway, let's move on. So looking at the back, we've got the uh, Asus logo up here. We've got all this stuff going on, which yeah, you may or may not like. It's uh, interesting. The display actually does have a swivel on the bottom, which is uh, yeah, pretty decent. And you've got a relatively wide range of travel there. Would have been nice to have seen some uh, swivel on this. It doesn't appear to swivel. I don't want to break it. There's nothing in the instruction manual that says how to actually allow it to swivel or anything. And I'm guessing because of the fact that actually there's electrical wires that go from the monitor down to here to power this RGB. Also as well, this isn't VESA mountable. So the stand is the stand. You have to use this or nothing at all. So you can't put it on a, a bracket or anything. So yeah, you have to make sure this is at the right height for you if you want to use it. Again, you've got height adjustment. So you can take it right down to the bottom level or take it back up to the top, but essentially that is it. I'll try and get some measurements of that in the video description or I'll maybe pop it up on the screen so you can see what the actual dimensions are. Moving around to the back, you've got this uh, cable management holder, which is, uh, yeah, I guess, relatively handy. Actually getting to the cables themselves is uh, actually quite a tricky thing to do. So if I turn this around a little bit more so you can see it a little bit better, there is this plastic cover on here, which, uh, itself is a pain in the backside to actually put on and remove. So if you're one of those people that has regular access because you're swapping and changing ports, etc., this may frustrate you. So this just uh, snaps off in a slightly unconvincing fashion. And then that gives you the access to all of your ports. Now I'll get some close-ups of those so you guys can actually see it as well in more detail. But essentially what you've got there is you've got a headphone jack, you've got a display port, two HDMIs, and unfortunately, I can't see the rest of it at the moment. So that is the USB type A ports, which are uh, USB three, also got a USB hub port. And also then you've got your DC jack in, which again, because of the way the monitor is and because you can't rotate it, it's really difficult to actually get to anything to do anything with. Those would be much better to be exposed, easier to get to, maybe a couple on that side, a couple on that side. That would make a great deal of sense. If you look at it from this angle, which hopefully you can see better on camera, most of this stuff is kind of hidden on this side. 
you could have, I guess, centralized it a little bit more, which would have been a pain, but certainly put some of it, maybe your IO on this side and your inputs on this side, would have made a lot of sense. Again, for the amount of money, I know it's basically you're buying this because of the screen quality rather than the kind of flexibility. But certainly when you're spending this sort of money, you expect it to be easy to use and uh, a tactile experience, I guess. Talking of a tactile experience, i spin it around a little bit more. So these are your control buttons. So you've got the joystick button there, got the usual thing, up, down, left, right, push it into select. Then next to that, you've got some also push buttons, which in themselves are a pain in the ass because whenever you're trying to move the monitor, if I give you a good example of this, so as I'm moving the monitor, naturally I'm grabbing this to try and spin it around, at which point I'm pressing multiple buttons. Not on this side I'm not, because there's nothing there, but on this side I'm pressing buttons. So just grabbing something or trying to find the joystick, potentially you could turn the monitor off, which can be a real pain in the backside. Again, it's just one of those things that it's unnecessarily complicated, really. They could have made it a lot easier. Maybe just have the joystick and get rid of the buttons because the buttons essentially are just repeating what the joystick will do anyway. Um, the power button is the bottom one here. And again, it's just, it's not a particularly tactile experience. And actually just looking at the buttons themselves, there's no real obvious thing of what they do apart from on the side here, printed very small. So the top one is a X button whatever that means. Next one down is, yep, yeah, again, no idea whatsoever. The bottom one is a G button, whatever that means, and then you've got a power button. So, yeah, it's, uh, once you get used to it, it'll be absolutely fine and realistic. I think most people are probably gonna end up using that joystick button. But it just seems overly complicated for what it is. Again, you're spending an absolute ton of money on this. Like 450 quid for a monitor isn't cheap. Personally, the uh, electronic one, which I reviewed a while back, which you can check out up here, even though it hasn't got the joystick, which was a shame, the actual menu system and the structure is great. Buttons are on the bottom, so if you have to move the monitor at all, you don't interrupt your game play or turn the thing off by mistake, and all those kind of confusions. Anyway, let's move on. Actually, first of all, I'm gonna try and get this back on. So this panel is a pain in the backside, and because you can't actually see most of it because it is behind there, you're kind of, you're fighting with it all the time. So let's see if I can get those locked in first of all on the top. I think that's the, the best way of doing it. And it, yeah, it kind of snaps into position there. So you have your cable management running at the bottom. Realistically, if you're using a DisplayPort cable, a decent one, even actually the one that's included in there, it's really difficult to get this panel back on. I have already tried with the cable in place because the actual bulk of it wants to push against this bottom bit. So you're kind of forcing that in, which in turn bends the cable and puts stress on the DisplayPort. Why, oh why. Anyway, let's uh, let's look at some more positive things. Let's get some gameplay running on here and see what it actually plays like. That is essentially why you're buying this sort of monitor for gameplay. So let's fire up for some games and see what it's like. So here we are, this is a, a game running. This is a uh, rec fest, so you can, uh, yeah, you can get an idea of what the, uh, what the image quality is like. And actually, this is now with HDR turned on. And yeah, actually it does look, I'm trying to look at both monitors to see how it looks on the other as well. But actually, the display quality is awesome. Obviously, my gameplay is particularly uh, horrendous. This is running with a uh, 2060 KO. So we're probably not going to get anywhere near the 165 hertz, which is good, because we want to see what the actual uh, blur is like. And just looking around, it's actually it's pretty decent. Normally, some of these monitors, I do feel a little bit um, sort of bilious or seasick or travel sick with, but actually, even looking on this kind of strange angle, and actually the viewing angles are really good. Even here, kind of side on, it's actually still playable. I can see what I'm doing, although I can see what I'm doing very badly. But in terms of visual quality, I definitely, I can't fault it. I really can't. It's, uh, it does look fantastic with the HDR enabled. Again, it's one of those things which probably isn't going to come through on the screen particularly well. But it seems to be doing really well. Right, let's see if we can pause that. And let's go into the menu and we'll see how our how our screen's doing. So we've got free sync enable game plus and we'll go into FPS counter. We'll turn that on and also we'll choose our dynamic as well. So 
Let's get back into the game. Without crashing. So the graph seems to suggest that this is 165 frames per second and it's staying there. Which it does, well, it doesn't feel as if it isn't smooth, but I don't think we'll be doing that kind of frame rate in this game. In actual fact, if I pause it there, we have actually, oh no, we've got a frame counter from Steam in that corner there, so. Yeah, that backs up 166 frames per second, so. This seems to be doing pretty well. So let's jack up the, uh, the settings. And we go into graphics, uh, let's turn that up onto high. Let's see, can we change that? Let's put it to ultra. Uh, exit and save. And is that gonna make much of a difference? No, I think that is, uh, we're still getting 165 frames per second. And it still looks very nice. Actually with the HDR, with the high settings on there, that does look the, uh, does look the business. See if we can change that in any other way. I don't think we can get it any uh, any better. Let's put motion blur on. All we can do, display wise, full screen. Yeah. Let's try it with vertical sync disabled. Okay, so here's some uh, gameplay testing. I actually wanted to see what was going on. So it appears that the ASUS monitor, which is in this top corner, it says there 165 frames, which is supposed to be the real time frame counter. But if you uh, look in the top other corner, is the Steam counter, and it's we're currently running about 125 frames per second. So the ASUS frame rate counter is essentially uh, pointless. It basically tells you what your current selected Windows refresh rate is. And I've also put the monitor on to show the kind of the graph of the frame rates. And again, it stays at 165, even though the game is dipping to 120, 130. Uh, this is on Ultra but it doesn't give you a reflection of what's actually going on. So again, this could be user error. Most likely it possibly is. Again, it's just one of those things that they've added these features, which are supposedly kind of gamer features, sorry, and uh, they actually don't appear to do anything. So despite the fact the image quality, this is an HDR now, the image quality is fabulous. It genuinely is fabulous. Um, it looks, Amazing, the colors are great, the saturation is absolutely spot on. I haven't even calibrated it, this is out of the box settings and it appears to be absolutely brilliant. No hot spots, no uh, bleeding or anything like that, no backlight bleeding. It's really, really good, uh, exceptionally good. And things like um, text on the screen, absolutely brilliant. The, uh, the pixel density is perfect. 27 inches for this kind of display 1440p I think is pretty much the sweet spot. When you go to 32, it starts to get a slightly bit blurry, a little bit more messy, but this actually does look fantastic. It really does. So that's enough gameplay. Uh, let's uh, try and rip this thing apart a little bit more. So first of all, actually, uh, bezels. Bezels is something which Caf has noticed and pointed out to me, and actually, because I'm so close to it, I didn't really recognize it myself. That is the fact that um, when you look at the monitor, it looks like it's got these really sharp, thin bezels. But as is the case on a lot of monitors these days, actually the bezel is part of the screen. So when it's turned off, it looks absolutely fine. But actually when it's in use, there is a good, I'm gonna actually measure it. There is probably a good, probably about seven millimeters of additional bezel, which is actually built into the screen itself. So even though you do your vertical measurement or horizontal measurement rather this way, you probably have to take some of that off because of the actual size of the bezels. There's the best part of, a centimeters worth of bezel if you measure it side to side so yeah that isn't particularly great and actually i'm going to see if that is the same in general windows which i'm, I'm thinking it's going to be i'm sure it's going to be exactly the same yeah actually when it's dark like this i can just about make out so yeah you can still see it there is this uh pretty chunky bezel all the way around the outside edge which it's a little bit misleading. I'd probably rather have just plastic around it, but again, that is part of that modern look. So, although this isn't the most uh, scientific test of a monitor, let's take a look at some of the pros and the cons. So, the pros. RGB built in, if that's your thing, definitely. The ROG logo on the floor, again, if uh, you're an ASUS fanboy and you like that sort of thing, absolutely great. 
27 inch monitor with this pixel density is the sweet spot for sure. The image quality is phenomenal, it really is. The camera isn't doing it justice. I can see the monitor there. It really doesn't do it justice. The screen, the, the display itself, if that is your primary concern and your primary concern only, maybe you're using it for gaming, video editing or whatever, yes, the, the actual color representation, the look, the crispness, the richness of the colors, etc. can't fault that at all. So top marks there for Asus. The things I don't like are things like the, uh, the additional bezels, which seems to be kind of like a concurrent thing in the market these days. The ease of access to the menu, not brilliant. Certainly works and you would get used to it after a while, but I think those extra buttons are probably unnecessary. They are, if I press them there, you can see that it comes up on the screen to the on-screen display to tell you what it actually is. So like the off ones at the bottom, G in the bottom for the game mode, etc. But realistically, you can press the, uh, the joystick and get to all of that anyway. So for me personally, I would have preferred just to have the joystick and maybe one other button to turn the monitor on or off at the bottom, possibly. Again, that is the, more of a personal thing. Features wise, it's probably got too many features. There's so many things like the anti-blurring, all that kind of stuff. You can change this thing to your heart's content. It's nice to have FreeSync Premium Pro, which uh, is a slight uplift over the standard FreeSync, so it does take you a little bit higher. Multiple inputs, I would have liked to have seen probably a, possibly another display port on there. The display ports absolutely fine, does what it's meant to do, and you've got two HDMI, so if, essentially this is aimed at gamers. So if you're using maybe HDMI from your PC, uh, maybe HDMI's from your PlayStation 5 or your PS4, then it's totally got you covered. And for that, yes, uh, absolutely brilliant. The ability to kind of swivel it a little bit on the stand without moving the stand itself is kind of nice, and I guess that would come into its own. The RGB on the back is pretty much, yeah, depending on your setup. For bling stats, yes, it scores very highly, but for actual real-world usability and the fact that it's ASUS or Sync compatible is... Yes, not uh, not brilliant. Ease of access for the ports on the back is a disappointment, having that plastic panel over. I have actually put the plastic panel back on now, and it does actually angle the cables towards the center where the cable management goes. So although it is bending the cables a little bit, it's not, uh, not totally unusable. It does work, it gets the job done. Whether it's worth 400 odd pounds, 450 pounds it is in the UK, I think at 429, I think we paid for it. Whether it's worth that, I've got to be honest with you, if I put this next to my electric, uh, I would be very, very hard pressed to see the difference between them. That costs kind of £230. It's got the RGB, it's actually even bigger. It's still got HDR, which looks essentially very similar. There's very, very little. You are definitely paying a little bit of ASUS premium ROG tax on this monitor, if I'm being completely honest with you. So if you've got the money and uh, ROG is your thing, then obviously, yeah, it's going to tick all those boxes for you. The display itself, I can't fault it. The screen, the actual colours, all that kind of stuff. Like I said earlier, yes, it is brilliant. The viewing angles are fantastic. And it isn't until you get kind of literally straight onto it that you start getting some reflection that I'm getting from the other screen and the display looks a little bit muddy. But certainly as you come around to this kind of angle, it's fine. Straight on, obviously, it's absolutely perfect. Stupid little things like the, uh, the frame rate counter there, which apparently doesn't seem to work. Um, again, maybe it's me being stupid. Maybe there's something I'm not doing. Potentially that is the case. But ultimately, most people are going to get this. They don't want to be reading through tons and tons of installation manuals or instructions or that kind of stuff. You just want to plug it in and use it in game. Which, if you then have to start looking into these things and saying, well, how the hell do I get my frame rate counter to work properly? It's, yeah. For me, I'm lost already. So the fact that I've had to buy this for our son, for a present, it's fine because it's the present that he wanted and yes, it's done. But for me personally, if I bought this for £450, I probably would send it back if I'm completely honest. So there you go. There has been my non-scientific, uh, positively negative view of the Asus XG27WQ. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Um, have I been overly harsh? Have I picked at the nits too much? I don't think I have. Truthfully, great display, just yeah, stupid frills have made it way too expensive. Anyway, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.